Thank you, thank you. Good evening, good evening, everybody. Good evening. We want to welcome you to the Discipleship University. Amen. Yeah. Welcome to the class. We call it the, if I say the class. The class. The class. Welcome to the class. Uh, Discipleship University. Uh, I'm Apostle Albert. Everybody tonight. Uh, I pray that um, everybody's you know, excited about you know, they can bring tonight. Everybody had a good day. I was in class. Yes, one person. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good day. Good. Okay. Um, we're going to uh, do some prayer today. Heavenly Father, we um, we thank you for this wonderful and lovely day of gracious and glorious God, and I expect you all. Um, those who may be still may be coming with Richard St. Girls, God, I expect you to be safe to get back to the Father, I thank you for choosing us for Richard St. Girls, God, and we ask that you, Holy Spirit, we ask that you just come and you teach us and, and you got us in, in, in the word of Richard St. Girls, God, and knowing that, knowing that you um, had sent your son to um, preach for the home of Richard St. Girls, God. So, Father, we ask that you just have your way. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 We're going to, um, I'm going to show you, we're going to start actually a study concerning this book. Uh, so we're going to have everybody this, 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 great, uh, this presence is in the midst of, of you, knowing about that. I think, and, I'm, and I, one reason I, I kind of want it, I want to kind of go over it tonight. I'm not going over it, but I'm not going to get into the book that we give everybody a book. But I want to go over one section of the and, and read one section and go over uh, the importance of understanding being in the presence of God. Um, and just out of curiosity, when we say in the presence of God, somebody, what do y'all think? What do you think? When you think about somebody say the presence, what do we? What are some of the thoughts we have? I like I like uh, King say knowing that He's there. Amen. Mm-hmm. Knowing that God is there. Um, someone else at his feet, at his feet. No one, you said us being in his feet. Mm-hmm. Anybody else? Hmm? Okay, that's the question. <laughs> hey, Andre, why are you tripping? <laughs> what has been in the presence of God? You just repeat the question, that's not the answer. Okay, we're gonna believe my dear Okay. In the presence of God, uh, and I, I, I want to tell, uh, I want us to really. Uh, I'm going to, I you know we're gonna go to Genesis, and I want to show you something in Genesis as we go over understanding the true presence of God and what it, and, and, and there's some things that that we need to understand because I think what I'm learning that we know that we are in the presence of God when you are in the presence of someone of great authority when you're in the presence of someone. Hold great authority. Could that? I'm gonna ask the question now. How could that change your behavior? How could that? How could that impact your behavior? Knowing that you are in the presence of someone of great authority. Uh, talk like you want everybody to hear. Okay. I like, I like, actually like how you say that because I think that if you, if this person has great authority, then, you know, there might be a fear for that authority. And I'm, when I say fear, that word fear has two meanings, right? Like, I mean, it's a, there's a fear that you might want to fear. Because if you see a police officer, there is a fear that you might want to have for real um, because, you know, they can arrest you or something, you do something wrong. But there's also should be a fear of reverence. And that's kind of interesting because we're in a time now that when it even came to law enforcement, people do not, we see a lot, a great deal of people today will not reverence law enforcement. You know what I'm saying? They won't reverence somebody. Without, and I'm not saying it's all the people's fault in necessarily certain situations, but I think when we get to the place where we begin to measure everybody by maybe one person's behavior, let's say, you know, and that's what, uh, y'all heard me say this before, one of the greatest things uh, uh, of the kingdom is when you begin to generalize. And when you generalize, because what, general, what generalization may do is still hold. 
Because if you say, well, all police officers are no good, where you still hope from someone be feeling that be protected by them. You know what I'm saying? There is thousands and thousands, ten thousands of ten police officers, and you may actually get one, two, uh, uh, three or four that might be bad police officers. You know what I'm saying? So we want to take when you say there's one, two, um, one, two bad police officers. You want to generalize all police officers. And the reason I'm saying that because we have that tendency, Satan will usher in people's mind, and people have a tendency to generalize. We'll say, we'll say church. We'll say somebody, well, I was church her, church woman, right? They were church her. And then you seen people begin to generalize church and say, well, church is a bad place. And church is not, I don't want to go to church. Church is negative. You know what I'm saying? So they begin to generalize church based off of one or two people, maybe one or three, two, three, four pastors, when there's thousands of pastors. You know what I'm saying? You, you may have a hand of God doing what they do. You know what I'm saying? You don't hear nothing about them. They have served people diligently with love, um, affection. And I'm, when I say this, we know that uh, being perfect, there is no perfection. It's a rule for it. There, 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 there's no perfection. So when there is no perfection, what I mean when I say nobody is perfected, meaning that everybody can have different issues. Amen. All of us have different issues. What I mean by that when I say different issues is that the pastor is um the pastor can be he's not perfect. You know what I'm saying? Um uh the, the police officers they're not perfect but they're not intentionally going around trying to hurt somebody. They're not intentionally going around to so but when you get when you get one hold oh, 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 She's making that dummy child hold that time. I'm gonna slip on. Why you can why you can generally be trying to why one may intentionally be doing something dirty, you know what I'm saying? There are a hundred that's trying to do the right thing. And I want y'all to understand this. So we don't want to get you, we don't want we don't want to create a society that gets to the place that begins to generalize where you begin to say, well, all officers are bad, or all pastors are bad, or all people are bad because somebody was bad in a situation. Because what will happen is, if you do that, you will lose reference. And, and then you can see the trick of the enemy. Like if you say all women are bad, or all men are bad, what you might start doing is treating women a certain type of way, or treating men a certain type of way. Based off the fact is, it might, it's millions of women, and there are millions of men. You cannot judge everyone according. Uh, you can't judge everyone according to the fact is if one he had one bad relationship. Everybody with me. So, and and, and this is what I and we, when you're in the when, when we're talking about in his presence, when you are in the presence of something, uh, 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 that presence has the ability to influence you. Amen. The presence of what you're in has the ability to influence you. So it's important to understand that you're in the present. And, and like uh, it was said in the back, that being in the presence of someone with authority or situation can be influential to you on how you conduct yourself, how you behave yourself, how you treat people. That And, and I, use this as an, I, use, I use this as an example. If I was driving, right? If somebody, if I was driving and, and a police officer pulled up, being, how many of y'all, when, when you see that police officer pull up, you slow down. You look at your, uh, your speed mama. Come on, everybody, don't be raising your hand. Don't be raising your hand. So being in, especially, come on, especially, and if you hear that state trooper, the light go off, you be like, I'll be praying, like, going on that big And you look at, the first thing you look at, y'all gotta get this. The first thing you look at when you hear that police officer siren or you see him, you look at your mom because you want to make sure that you are in line. line. We got to get this seat because I believe that we have gotten to the place where in, in this in this book that we're going to give everybody, we're going to get it. We're going to order some books. We're going to make sure everybody get a book. In this book, because in this book is called, I don't want to see this book. It's powerful because I believe that we're in a time that people are no longer conscious of what they are in the presence of. And I believe one of Satan's greatest weapons is to get us to become unconscious to what you're in the present. You know what you have? Come on. When we look at light, certain times you can see 
me, it's funny. I'm, 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 I'm seeing a TV show with a big splash in front of me. Have you ever seen a show where the man, his wife, sitting there, he act like he unconscious of his wife, and one of them, he like, and she's like, bam, you know what I'm saying? In other words, he became unconscious to what he was in the presence of, in behaving in a way that caused him to get in trouble. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. And and the bottom line is, see, the thing, and also when we talk about being in the presence of something, you can be, and I think, oh, this was a real trick of the enemy right here, to get us to believe the presence of God can only belong to certain people, or it can only be entered in in certain buildings. That, oh my God, if that wasn't a trick, if that wasn't a trick of the enemy, to make people believe that, you know, that you can only really be in the presence of God when you go to church, when you're in the old building one. And when we teach the name, Treat, and how many of y'all know this? And I'm not saying it's wrong, but they will begin to treat the building with just great reverence. You know what I'm saying? Oh, please don't touch that glass. Oh, you know, when you come here and people are like, oh, I've been not curse. Girl, it, 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 I, I've seen this. People are like, they go in a place like, because you know you're in the church. You're like, they're like, oh, you're in the church because you act in a certain way. You say, like, you may act like, you better act. And they are trying to get you to, that because of what you are in, they're trying to make sure that your behavior is in alignment of what you are in, that you don't get in trouble. Come on, that you won't get in trouble. Amen? Now, I wanna show you, and God wants, well, I wanna show you, because God wants to show us, because what's happening, if we're in a time where there's a great falling away, right? Where people are falling away from God. And we are in a time where people, oh, if you look at America, and you look at, you'll be like, they ain't, I, I don't even believe when the Bible says, when the Bible says, that there's going to be a great problem. When about talk that, that the darkness has increased itself, that the hell has enlarged itself. Hell is uh, affiliated with darkness. What's interesting with darkness, it will cause you not to really recognize what's present. So when darkness is enlarging, it's because you're, not, you're, you're now in a situation where you're unconscious to what is present. That means, yeah, how many get what I'm trying to say? In other words, if This room is real dark, and see, then we don't know who's there. And when you don't know who's present, you are prone to act any kind of way in that area of darkness. So I believe that one of Satan's greatest weapons was to extend a darkness, but a darkness also drives with more ignorance, an ignorance to the consciousness of God. What do y'all think of my bed? Let's make, and, and he shifted the English. Because when there's an ignorance to the consciousness of God, then I'm not really to please God in certain situations because I'm not really even conscious of him. Does it make sense? Now, now y'all got to get this. Because the Bible says without faith, it's impossible what? To please God. So without faith, it's impossible. So faith come by what? Hearing what? And the more knowledge I get of something, does that not bring me to a place of awareness? Amen? It brings me to a place of awakening, illuminating, to be conscious of something. So that's why it's funny that people, many people, they, they like signs and wonders, like that, but they don't like the word. It's like people are, and Satan is really, like we get so busy. People, obviously we can get so busy. And we like, man, I ain't reading the word today. I ain't read the word in three days. I ain't read the word. The word still sitting in your sitting on your table. And without the word of the God, the Bible says, watch it. He said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And then he says in Romans, they refuse to, I mean, they refuse to retain the knowledge. So God says, refusing to have it, but ain't it? And a lack of it can put you in a position of trouble. And that's really true because a lack of not knowing who you might who might be in a room when you run your mouth. Come on, y'all y'all see a movie. Somebody was talking, man, I'm gonna go in here and this brother been not trying me on this interview and he's saying this and that. And then he, he's sitting right next to uh, the cousin or the family of somebody he's looking at. Yeah, how many get what I'm saying? An uh, ignorance of not knowing who, he, who is in your presence can cause you to think you can act any type of way, which um you in trouble. So we want to, we, we, we really want to get into this topic 
Because I don't know about can we, how many of us in this room, if you to be honest, find yourself sometime, and I don't really have that. I'm not really conscious of God all the time. Mm -hmm. Anybody find themselves? Because and of that is when you look at how you act or when you look at what you did in that situation. But how many of us, your conscience was waking real quick because as soon as you act the way something came and something was like something, what you doing? Mm -hmm. Amen? Or you was like, you, in other words, you might not have been conscious, but he made you conscious. The spirit got made you conscious. Like he like, I'm here. And then you'd be like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Anybody would be like, I'm sorry. Right. And you got you like, you don't. And you're like, I'm here. So God makes you aware of his work. Right. Amen. Amen. But I, I, I want to start in, um, we're going to start out in, in Genesis, the three, the third chapter. So I want to kind of give you a, 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 a countdown on it. And we go to Genesis three, then you the there was Adam and Eve. And for time's sake, I'm going to go over the story. Adam and Eve, right? Adam was the first man and out of Adam, God made woman and she is Eve, right? Adam and Eve was told not to eat from, they, they can eat all, all, from the whole garden, they can eat any food, right? And then Adam and Eve was told that, now y'all gotta get this, Adam and Eve was told that they can partake of every fruit in the garden. Y'all gotta really, this thing, this thing is so powerful too. Even um, the, in, in chapter two, verse nine says, and out of the ground, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree. That is pleasant and good. And the tree of life also was in the midst of the garden. I will underline that in verse 9 because does anybody wonder why didn't they choose like? Remember that they can eat from every tree of garden. It was never told them that they could not eat from the tree of life. And yet, she was not hanging by the tree of life. He was not hanging by the tree of life. The, the tree of life. The Bible is telling you right there in verse 9. Life was in the midst of the garden. So that means in the midst of the garden, you got all the food that you can eat from. And also, there was nothing said at this time that they could not partake of the tree of life. And they, they weren't hanging around by the tree of life. They were not in the presence of the tree. They were actually in the presence of something they could not have. Dangerous thing to find yourself in the presence of something that you were told the word or, or that you know by the word of God that you have no business partaking of. Because now, whatever you in the presence can begin to influence you. And because, I got to get this, Satan saw what she was in the presence of. The Bible does not say that he lured her to that tree. So that means she was hanging around the tree. She was in the presence of the tree, in the tree of light in the midst. And she hanging around the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, of the very tree that she had a word, knowledge, I'm going to say knowledge, knowledge. And not, she was hanging around the tree where she had the knowledge where it says, do not partake, you cannot eat from this tree. Sometimes we want to hang around the thing we know we ain't got no business having. We want to talk to the person the Bible tells you don't be unevenly what? No. Isn't it funny how many people want to hang around somebody that ain't, they, they won't, they want to, it's amazing how many girls and how many boys must, when the word of God has told you, and you know that the word says that my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, and then you get the word, and the word tells you do not be unevenly yoked, and yet you do, now watch, once you get it, you fall in the Romans 1. What is number one? You refuse to repent. That would have kept you safe in that situation. And you there. Now watch this. But while you there, the Bible begins to let us know with E that Satan becomes, he begins to influence. In other words, when Satan see you hanging around the presence of something that anybody, come on, we're going to talk about tonight because I want you to get, we're going we, we to take our time with this study. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you know you ain't got no business being in the presence of that? And you start hearing this boy be like, you know what? Don't leave yet. Ain't nothing gonna happen. Oh, y'all gonna act like everybody, y'all gonna sit in here and act like y'all don't know what time it is. Oh, you know that the Bible says, put no confidence in your flesh. I can't hear you. Put no confidence in your flesh. The Bible tells you to flee from youthful lust. And yet you hear this boy saying, you know, you just relax, you tired. 
Boy, you tired. Just sit there and relax. That is the employer who is finding you in what? In the presence of something you have no, y'all got to go. I said it's a two way work. It works two ways. You Satan, what's it? the Bible says that Satan is the most subtle. He was the most subtle. Uh, he used the most, the serpent was the most subtle. I don't, subtle. I mean, he came subtle. He didn't come for us, but he came as an influencer, but to influence one who was dwelling in the presence of something that he had no business. So actually, he only give you what he see you want. Mm. Satan only began to influence you or provoke you in something he see you spending time with, that he sees you in the presence of. That's why the Bible says a man is carried away by his what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not by Satan. There you go. See, that's, what get there. that's why I even tell people, man, you know what? The church wounded me and I went back in the world. No. No, that's not true. You ain't go back because they wounded you because the Bible says just because you got offended with somebody, the only way you went back because the Bible said in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Because you use it as an excuse. Remember I told you, 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 you can use offense as an excuse to do what you really want to do. You really wanted to submit to your flesh. You really want to go. So, I, so you're going to go around talking about the church wounded you but guess what? Jesus was wounded by the church. And he died for her. Amen? Amen. And since he is our example, yes. when we get wounded, we ought to be willing to die. What that means to die? It means die to your flesh. The day who wounds you can see Christ. Amen. And maybe they can be delivered. Amen? Are we learning something? Yes, In the presence. But see, Adam and Eve was in the present. Eve were, and Adam wasn't far from her. Read the book. Because she, read the, you read the Bible. She, she just, there she goes. She was able to read. He was able to read. So that means he, he was, was standing. Mm -hmm. So, so. <laughs> he basically, yeah, he heard what he was. Yeah. Right. So he was able to be influenced. Oh, by, because when somebody influenced you, you, you're going to most likely influence somebody else. Yeah. You're going to. You start doing, you start rolling dirty, you won't start it throwing another because why you don't want to be by yourself. The Bible talk about it. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So, but the key to what we're talking about tonight is he was in the presence. They were in the presence of something they had no business partaking of. So I examine what are we in the presence of? Amen. Now, what happens after that is y'all gotta get so they in the presence being influenced by Satan to partake of something that God told them not to partake of. Now Eve bites the fruit. Amen. The Bible says her eyes were open. Mm. Amen. And that, that means, I'm going to tell y'all something that's going to mess us up. When Eve gave that fruit to Adam, she knew she was caused to fall. Yes, she did. Why? Because the scripture says that her eye, when she bit into the fruit, her mm -hmm. eyes was open. That means she was consciously she now aware of what was wrong when she passed them over. Yeah. What am I trying to tell you? People can be consciously aware of trying to lure you in the wrong direction. They can be conscious. They know they ain't right, but because but they sit there and, and consciously begin to what? Maneuver you to turn against your friend. Turn against the man of God, turn against the woman of God, turn against your brothers and sisters. They will consciously move that way. Why? Because they It's a heart issue. It's just the truth. Now, but this is the problem I want y'all to get. We're gonna say we say now. Watch this. I'm gonna read, I'm gonna start reading. And uh, the verse six is and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes. Mm, Y'all got to get, y'all got to, this is going to be good. In verse six, the woman looks at the tree and sees it's pleasant to the eyes. But in chapter two, in verse nine, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree pleasant to the sight and good for food. And the tree of the light also was in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge and good and evil. But they were told that the tree of, that they were told not to partake of the tree of knowledge. But watch this. After a while of her being in the presence of influenced by the enemy, what was a, what was supposed to be 
something not pleasant to partake of, she starts seeing it as being pleasant. Mm -hmm. She, we start seeing, she starts seeing it as being pleasant to the eye. And the tree, watch it. Not only was it pleasant, and the tree to be desired, to be made one wise, she started seeing what was told for her not to touch as something that was going to be beneficiary for her. A desire that was going to, she perceived that tree, desire met for her to become wise. Mm. Isn't it funny how when any began to move us, we began to perceive the thing that God told us not to, as a desire that's going to make us, that's going to cause us to grow in some area? Mm. Now watch this. Wise. Took the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her. He said, where was he? He was with her and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked. And they saw, they saw and made themselves apparel. Now watch this. I'm going to go verse 8 where we're going to come my text from. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Everybody said they heard. They, heard. they began to recognize that the presence of God. Was the voice of the Lord. How, how many of y'all know? You can tell if, 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 uh, if, let me see, if D, if D is out there right next to the side, and D being outside, I know D voice. Anybody talk to D for a while, how much D, they're going to start knowing D voice. <laughs> you know what I said? D don't have to be in this room if I hear D talking outside because I know her what? Voice. I'm going to say D is what? <laughs> If you know your teacher's voice, she ain't got to get in the classroom before you get in. Oh, somebody gonna hear what the mm -hmm. Lord is saying. She don't have to get in the classroom before you start straightening up. Because if you know her voice, when you hear her talking in the hallway, she, she hear, she hear. You gonna her voice is going to let you know that she is what present. present. God, that's why when you hear the word of God, the word of God, you ought to know. That he pressed. Somebody gonna get what I just said. But even in the church, or you, I don't care if you in the grocery store, I don't care where you are, where the word is. If that person has the word in them and they begin to speak, if T began to speak and the word of God is alive in her, when she begins to spoken to somebody who was not saved or somebody who has backslidden, or somebody was in a in a terrible condition, and as you begin to speak, they begin to weep or they begin to repent. Why? Because when you begin to speak, they knew that God was present. Without you, it was the words that you will begin to release. Come on, man, y'all got to get this because that's the, that's why the Bible says that it was the voice of the Lord. The voice meaning that. They heard his voice. And what God is trying to tell you, when the spirit of God is present in you, when you begin to speak, if God is present. Have you ever began to speak in a situation and I did, and, it's funny, and somebody will question me like, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. It wasn't about you. It's that when you began to speak or when you began to talk, they began to hear someone present with authority. That I, that I don't want to disrespect. And God is saying, I have words, my sons and daughters, that I'm pouring the word in, that all may know that I am. Come on. Where's my sons and daughters that I'm filling with the Holy Spirit that's going to bet this, that's going to give you power to be a witness that when you speak, people will begin to know that God is. But when we begin to find ourselves compromised, like Adam and Eve, amen? When Adam and Eve, now they have bit into disobedience. Oh, y'all, this is going to be so good. And start up 
embracing the presence of God. How many have you and how many of us have ever got to the place where we was walking with God, but we found ourselves in the presence of something we have no business? And, and when you hear instead of embracing it, now watch what let me tell you what happened next. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves. They hid themselves from what? Let me, let, me, let me read it. Adam, it says, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife uh, hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God in the midst of the trees. It's a terrible thing when you begin to hide yourself from the presence. Some of y'all think that your friend didn't like you. No, when you got saved and you got on fire. No, they didn't, it's not that they didn't like you. The lifestyle that they was living, they know be in the presence that was gonna bring, come on, bring them to a place to make a decision to, or to repent or to make a decision to turn their life around. See, you thought, man, they got, they hate you. They, why they don't want to be with me no more? Why they act like they don't want to be? It's not you. It's how the God inside you that when you speak, you're not speaking of yourself. You're speaking of God. And when the presence of God is present, guess what? Those people, those who do not, who have moved away from God, those who are living a life contrary to God, they begin to hide from you. They don't want to take your phone calls no more. They don't want to, they don't want when you come when you come over, they don't, they don't want, they don't want to see you no more. Why? Because when you have, it ain't that you, it's not that you come to condemn, but when truth steps in a room, come on, because in the presence of God, the Bible is the fullness of joy. Why is there the fullness of joy? Because in the presence of God, there is God is spirit, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Somebody else to me, what is God? God is love. I need somebody to go and write for me. Come on. 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 God is spirit, the spirit. God is love. Somebody else say that. God is true. Okay. Hmm? It's kind. Light. He is peaceful. Long suffering. Now remember this: when you are in the presence of God, it ain't this freaky thing you feel. When you are in the presence of pure love, pure love is going to affect you. When you are in the presence of pure truth, God is light. When you are in the presence of light, darkness can't go. When you are in the presence of truth, lies can't go. When you are in the presence of kindness. Hatred can't go. And when the spirit of God is speaking, but to speak according to who he is, you begin, to, that's why the Bible says, what does light have to do with darkness unless it's there to reprove? Reprove means expose. God says, when the spirit of God is dwelling in you, it has nothing to do with you while things begin to get exposed. Oh my God. It ain't no power. It's the power in you. When, pe when people want to repent, it ain't your power, it's the power in you. It's the spirit of God, because where the spirit of the God, that's why the Bible says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Why does he say where the spirit of the Lord is? Because why? How can the spirit of God be present in all who God is, that exists, all who God is, and people do not get set free? How can truth be present and deliverance don't go forth? How can love be present and hatred don't flee. Unless somebody harden their heart and reject what is going forward. They're not, they're, again, again, they're not rejecting you. 
they're rejecting the God in you. That's why you say greater is he that's in me than he that is in the, the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of eye, and the right. pride of life. These things are not of the Father. These things are not of the Father. So a lot of things that your flesh is looking for, a lot of things that your eyes always want, and a lot of things that pride will drive you, those things are not the Father. So when someone starts talking and the presence of God is present, it's going to begin to bring deliverance. Yes. Y'all know, y'all, I'm going to tell you something that's going to mess you up. The Bible says that there is no condemnation to those who are led by the Spirit, right? Yes. But he didn't say there was no condemnation to those who might not be led by the Spirit. You might start, why? Because condemnation may come in a sense of if your behavior is con is your if your behavior if, and watch it the condemnation is in the sin not in you yeah I gotta get I just said the condemnation is in the sin because sin is sin brings death right so the righteousness is in God because the sin but Jesus but Jesus revealed grace and truth amen Jesus came to bring a transformation. Are y'all with me? So when Jesus is present, when the word of God is present, and that's why, man, we don't turn being in the presence of this freaky thing. Oh, I just, I feel the of God. But the presence of God, did it bring conviction? Did it bring revelation? What did, what the, what did the presence of God begin to do to you? Because the truth be told, you are in the presence of God right now. Because I'm not preaching myself. He, they hid from the presence. Even though, how many of y'all know you can't hide from God's presence? Because, come on. Whereas, there's nowhere you can go that God doesn't dwell. It's because when you know, when you're not in alignment, have you ever seen a police chase? The, 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 the one they're chasing is trying to hide because they know that they're not in alignment with the and to get arrested and be brought into bondage. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, I, I want to say this to people. When you find yourself in trouble, don't run away. From run to the spirit that sets you free. That's what you call repentance. But people be like, I'm, I'm done. I'm I'm, a move. I'm I'm run away from God. I'm through with God. Uh, but, and they get mad at God and they run away from the presence of God. Uh, an example about a person in the Bible who, ran, who, 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 who left the presence of God. If you came, when Adam and Eve came together, they had children, right? One was Abel and one was Cain. What was interesting about Cain, Cain was First, like about to, he came first. And God did not accept what is offering. What am I trying to say? Sometimes when you are in the presence, you're going to get mad because we think that we can go before God's presence and offer anything to God. That is absolutely true. Because the Bible says that when Cain was in the presence of God, God told Cain, I have no respect for your offer. If God is the same today, yesterday, and forever, that means you and I can try to go in the presence of God and try to offer God be like, no, I don't respect that. So don't let, don't let people fool you by you thinking that people just because that everything they doing, that God like, I'm down with this, I'm down with that. God showed in the book of Genesis with Cain, no, I'm not down. You ain't going to just come to me with anything. Who was in, how many of you know he can't offer some of God let's see in the presence, right? Cain is in the presence with God. God is telling Cain why he's in his presence. Who is God? God who is kind, spent the spirit, truth. He is holiness. He is ho holiness on it, right? The holiness. He is holiness. And Cain ground the fruit of God. And bring Abel brought God his best. Cain. See, so y'all gotta, when you read the story, the story makes it plain. People tell, you know, people theologians, people, sometimes people are so smart that they, they just look right over. 
you read the story, you can tell the difference between Cain and Abel. It, all, it tells you that Abel, it wasn't about fruit or lamb because that's not what he said. It was about Abel chose the fattest lamb. He chose the very best. Cain just grabbed some fruit and said, I'm going to bring this to God. I would think when you're going into the presence of God of any authority, you might want to go in sharp. You might want to go in. You know, if you're going before a judge, you might want to in any kind of way. You might not want to go in dressed any kind of way. You might not. Why? Because the person, what you're going in the midst of, can be influential to changing and moving your life. I'm going to give what I just said. When you go into the presence of God, you might not want to go into the presence of God just going in any kind of way. I mean, y'all with me? Just like, for instance, come on, man. Can I, can I, can I, can I, can I share something with y'all? Watch this. How many of y'all, I know today people don't really, really think about it. But I know when I, when I was going to talk to a female or go to a female, you're going to meet her parents. You might not want to walk in front of that female parent. Somebody, what's up, babe? What's up, dude, babe? You know, my mom was like, who are you talking to? Number one, don't bring that back to my house tomorrow. He ain't got no manners. Come on, now be real. He ain't got no manners. He ain't got no respect. He's going to walk up into my house and talk to me like he talks to somebody in the street. No. And then your mama going to look at you like, where you get that from? And what made you think it was okay for you to bring this foolishness to my house? Am I right or wrong? Because your mama going to you think he should have took some time to understand who he was coming before? Mm -hmm. See, today, y'all, we're going to be real up in here today. See, today, some of y'all let young men and women just step in y'all any kind of way. It ain't always been that way. Like, hey, what's up, little, what's up, little freak? <laughs> <laughs> and then later on, you're talking about he disrespects him. Well, the reason you don't even recognize disrespect because the way he approached you was disrespectful. Yeah. When you gonna let me tap that? When you gonna let me smash that? And you're like, boy, you so you so nasty. The reason why you were like nasty too, because number one, the way he's approaching you is a reflection of who he is, and he perceives that you're the same way. Yeah, you understand? So. Let me ask y'all a question. Could it be the way people are approaching God today with such disrespect is because the church mm has -hmm. said, you know, it's okay to be disrespectful to God. Mm -hmm. Could it be while the world is trying to clown God on television with shows they're preaching disrespect in the name of Jesus Christ, um, they sit and everybody laughs in it, and everybody thinks Tyler Perry funny. I don't think he's funny. I did it first, and to God, he said, why do you think they're funny? Why do you, what makes him think it's okay to take my word and take who I am and try to clown me? Because remember this, when you're in the presence of someone, when you walk out of their presence, how you treat what you was in the presence of tells others it's okay to treat that person that way. Mm -hmm. now, now, let me give you an example. If I'm with, if I'm with Shaquille, right? And Shaquille, I'm with you. And we are in the presence of Shaquille. And Shaquille, and she cursing out her mama. And... She talking about her mama like her mama a dog. Why do I feel like I have to respect her mama? Am I right or wrong? If, if you are my presence and I'm calling my wife a bee, and y'all know, y'all know we crazy, right? Then somebody gonna say, well, that's my wife. I can call her bee. You don't call her no bee though. Bro, you the one setting the standard for her. You call her a female dog. Why you mad that I say woo woo when I see her? I'm just being real. What you in the presence, what you tells others how to treat it. So the question today, that's why the Bible says, do not bring God's name as a reproach among the Gentiles. God says, I don't want you to behave yourself in a way among the unsaved in a way that they believe that they can just treat me in any kind of way or take my name in any kind of way. In other words, you are, look, raise your hand in the air and say, I am a representation of the kingdom. I am a representation of the kingdom. Then you better act like you've been in the presence of holiness. So when you see, when see what? Holiness and know how they are, how they need to what? Approach the kingdom. You better represent that you know forgiveness. Why? Because we was forgiven. Amen. So somebody can know that they can be what? Forgiven in the kingdom. 
You better represent mercy in the kingdom. Somebody can know what? They can obtain what? Mercy. But if you represent judgment and condemnation, because you don't have to condemn them, because Matthew, uh, Mark 16 says, for those who don't believe, they condemn them. So if I'm already condemned, I don't need you to condemn me. I need you to save me. Tell me who you represent. Tell me who you've been in the present in. How many of y'all heard me say this? If I die in a pool, right? What am I? I'm going to be what? And I'm trying to hug Shay. Shay going to push me off or why? Because Shay don't want to be what? Because what I what? What I'm in the presence of is going to affect her too. If I've been rolling in dirt, come on. You've been rolling in dirt all day. Y'all know you got sweat in your stink. Rolling in dirt. No. And then you come home talking about what's up, babe? Come on, go take a bath. Go on, take a bath, but why? Because what you've been rolling in is going to influence me too. You become an influencer by what you are in the That's why Jesus told the Pharisees and scribes, he said he is the devil. Yeah. And he said, and when you go convert somebody, Amen. you convert them two times a son, what? Dirty. And when you convert, you pay dirty. Cain and Abel. Cain, watch this. Cain slew his brother. He murdered his brother. When God started dealing with Cain about murdering his brother, you know what Cain had the audacity to say? Your punishment. God, I don't your correction for me is too hard. And the Bible says that walked from the presence of God. So what was the difference? Now I want to show y'all this so y'all can get this. We're going to stay long. The difference, I want to show you. What is the difference of somebody becoming strong? What is the difference from somebody growing? What is the difference of somebody walking with power and authority? Everybody say, what you are in the presence of. Because watch this. The difference between Cain generation and the two generations, y'all. If you don't believe me, read it for yourself. In four, chapter four, to see, even in the sixth, he went out of the presence of the Lord. Cain said, I don't like your punishment. God, I don't want you to act me. I'm going out from your presence. Amen. Now watch this. But then if you keep reading, I thought it was so interesting. Verse, it was verse 16, but verse 26, 10 later, it says, and to Seth, because after Abel died, they birthed another child. And, and his name was Seth. I want to show you something real powerful. The Bible says, and to Seth, to him also there, there was born a son, and he called his name Enos, Enos. Then he to call upon the name of the Lord. Seth began to create a generation of men who, who what went into the presence of God. Mm -hmm. So what was the we came to Seth? A, one generation was not dwelling in the presence of God. They were dwelling in themselves. Now, if you start reading Cain generation, you're gonna find out Cain generation had money. Read it. He built the city. He not only had music, read it. Cain had a city. He had, I mean, Cain built a city. He had music. Uh, they had, they had made the man. Cain also was the first generation that married on it. So, but so Cain did whatever he wanted to do. Now, and watch this. To prove the word, the Bible says that there would be, when God says it rained, the just as well as the unjust. If you if you read Cain's generation, his generation was able to still prosper. He produced children. All you left because watch this. If you go read number four, when they are talking about Cain's generation, and Cain was a tender of the ground, and then he and it was this, and in his possession, he in time Cain has Cain brought forth fruit of the ground and offered. Now that's okay. I'm sorry. Then if you go where Cain said Cain took Abel. And you keep going, you keep going, you're going to see Cain generation. And Cain, verse which one, 15? 16. Right, I'm sorry. 
And Cain knew his wife, and she can bear Enos. Now, watch it. Produced a child. These are two different generations. Mm -hmm. They brothers. Yeah. But what makes them different is one is partaking and be trying to be like to please God, and the other one is not in the presence of God, doing the things that themselves. How many of us know that everybody in this room, including me, at one time we would have been in the Cain generation? Was big and bad enough doing what you wanted to do. I don't know about you, I know I would. If I wanted to have sex, I'm gonna do me. I ain't even have no conscience about it. I'm like, if I meet her, I like her, I'm gonna do her. It's all good. I ain't. I, I, you know, if I if you if you wanted some extra money, you ain't care. You, you know, if you gotta lie, extra money on contract, you're gonna lie. Whatever you desire. You went out. Am I right or wrong? Whatever you saw, if you like it, you start paying attention to. We were so prideful, we thought we had entitlement. We were so prideful, we thought, no, we thought we could do everybody else wrong, but you ain't gonna do me wrong. Mm -hmm. We were so prideful, if your mama said something to you wrong, you will curse her out, roll your eyes. We were so prideful that we wouldn't act in kindness. We wouldn't act in spirit. If we act in any of these things, we only did a bit. Amen. When we act in kindness, that kindness was only, I'm going to be kind. You know, I'm going to take you to dinner. What's up, GT? What's up? What's up? What's up, I'm going to take you to dinner. I'm going to take you to the movies. And you're like, he loved me. Can't, no. And how people are like, then why after they had, why after we had sex things change? Why? Because I didn't want you. I wanted them from you. Because the Bible says in the last days, men, gonna, men, this men and women, gonna become lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. What does that mean? They're gonna pursue you. They're not pursuing you for God. Why? Because they're not in the presence of God. When you're not in the presence of God, you pursue things just to make your flesh feel good. It's later you find out that they're a liar, that they're a cheater that they are deceiver, manipulator. And if you're not in the presence of God, you can't see that. Because in the presence of God, there's what? Light. In the presence of Satan, there's not light. There's, and that's why you move by your feelings. In the presence of, when you're not in the presence of God, you let Jesus guide you. And whatever you're finished, you think that's good. How many of us have let our feelings guide you? We found out, that, we found out what you had, you ain't like. But God says, I'll let you know. He said, what God says, I, he said, the, the word will be a light unto your a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. Let me tell you something gonna mess you up. Yes, you can know if that person is right for you. You can know. God would not leave his children blind. But the problem is you ain't got enough word in you to be able to see what you're really dealing with because you're in your feelings. But if you've been eating the word of God, the word of God is an illuminator. Come on now, it's an awakener. And once you get awakened, when that person speak, you have the ability to discern what's in their heart. So if I speak to you, and in my whole conversation about, yo, when you gonna let me do that? I don't care that they in church. I don't care if they are, I don't care if they're on the deacon board. When they open up their mouth, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the mouth, because the Bible says, I will be able to, do you have the word in your heart, or do you have flesh in your heart? Does that make sense? And what's going to be in your heart is what you've been in the presence of. When David found himself sinning, David said, let me tell you what David said. David said, Lord, um, creating me a clean heart, renewing, renewing me a steadfast spirit. Know what he said next? Lord, cast me not from your press. He knew. God, if my heart ain't right and my spirit ain't loyal to you, I'm, I don't want to be out of your presence, God, because if I'm out of your presence, if you cast me from your presence, you take your spirit, I can't function. I'm wretched. Without you not being in your presence, God, I can It is your presence that brings, if you see any kindness in me, that's because of who the presence I've been into. If you see any forgiveness in me, it's because of the presence I've been into. It's the presence I've been in. So give all glory to God because you can tell if I've been because what presence is the fruit of beginning to blossom. 
But see, Satan's job is to be a masquerader. What's a masquerader? Somebody who's going to try to pretend like they've been a prayer. really a wolf. But God says, if you've been in my presence, you'll be able to discern the difference. Because I know <laughs> Little Red Riding Hood, she was able to discern the difference. Mm. Grandma, what big ears you have. So you dressed up in the bed in grandma's clothes, but I'm noticing some characteristics that don't line up with my grandma. Hmm. Are we getting this? I'm going to read this to you. We're going to be neutral. And Adam and Eve, after they sin, they hid from the presence of God. We stop hiding from the presence of God. We do. We have to say, God, you know, I'm struggling, but I'm not going to hide from your presence. God, I'm battling. I'm not going to hide from your presence. Why? True change, real change comes forth only when you are in the presence of God who has the power to bring change. You know what happens when you're not in the presence of God? You begin to put on something. You put on makeup. You begin to put on all these things externally to think that you are that you, there's something different about you. But when they begin to look deeper, they begin to realize, you know, you, you still broke me. You still, you still, and I'm not talking about there's deliverance. You can be delivered, you can have get, be getting deliverance and be saved. But I'm talking about Satan ain't even saved because he can't do the word of God. How many get what I'm saying? I'm gonna read this. Because it says, Presence, conscious. We want to get to the place where we are present, conscious. When it comes to God, we are conscious. And I'm going to read it. I love your God in the midst of you. It, that I am in your midst. And when you raise up and lie down, when you go out and come in, I am always with you. Make, make a conscious effort to remain, remind yourself that I am in you and among you. Increase your awareness of me. Failure to think of me as always being with you gives you permission to walk in a way that is not pleasing to me. When you and I begin to the, get to the place where we're not consciously saying, I know that you are with me when I wake up in the morning. God, I know because Satan's job is to convince you that God is not with me. And when you and I begin to believe that God is not with you, we will begin to behave in a manner, just like for instance, when the Bible says, when the way the mice play, you know what I'm saying? When you think authority is not with you, you just like when we think we don't stay, we're a little more prone to put that gas up. So we trying to, am I right or wrong? Like you, bu you busting 89, you doing not, not even conscious of the right. But you mess around black and gold on the side, all of a sudden your feet inching off that speed. And you trying to hope that the mama, you trying to hope that speed with the mama come um, you be in don't pull you over and hinder from being successful. We, my God, I'm telling you, God, when God said 2021, turn your eyes back to the one, I says, those who are turning their eyes back to Christ, I'm waking up your conscience toward me. I want you to be awakened to your conscience, especially when you're dealing with him. God says, how will they know that they're my disciples? He said, in the way that you love one another. So guess what? I got to know when I'm dealing with twins, trend. I got to know when I'm dealing with uh, Alexis, Alexis. I got to know when I'm dealing with certain people that I'm dealing with. I heard me say this. You ain't got to worry about me pushing up on you and having sex with you because I'm worried about you getting pregnant. You ain't got to worry about me pushing up on you because I'm worried about home. Because if I'm in the presence of God, to push up on you is to displease him. I'm not talking about pleasing you. I'm praying if I'm in, if I'm in the presence of what? Love, Love ain't going to try to lay you on you. Especially. Y'all understand what I'm saying? If I'm in the presence of God, and who I'm in the presence with is going to teach me 
how to treat you. Watch this. Love God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. Right? Love thyself. How do I love myself? By what I'm in the presence of. If I'm loving God with all my heart, my soul, my mind, my strength, to me how to love me. Then he says, love thy neighbor as you love yourself. Now I know how to love my neighbor because I've been in the presence of love. And many of us, the reason why you are struggling with love is because you're not committed to being the best. And some of us, you're still searching for love in the wrong places because the place you're searching for love is some man or some woman or somebody to make you feel good in your flesh instead of somebody making you good in your spirit. See, so people like they like to make lies. People like to say lies. There's a thin line between love and hate. No, it isn't. They so far, when you say there's a thin line between love and hate, you're trying to say to them, they're not they're very much. And that's a lie. There's not a thin line between love. And hate. So far, apart, it's like crazy. I love that part when he said when he says, uh, "Watch this failure to think of me." As always being with you, you should to me. He was not God a presence when she was at that tree, but he was. What about you? God can be present and you don't have to acknowledge him. You go know, in the presence. How you go? Somebody who are already there. You're not in the presence of God. What you are doing is acknowledging the presence of God because he's already there. Some of us, that's why you, you be like, you be driving, man, I was, I was in, I, oh my God. Because all you did was begin to acknowledge God in the car. You can be at your job and stop being, wait, congru up God that he was there. You just acknowledge. See, when you don't acknowledge one, you have you walked in the house and didn't acknowledge your mother sitting in the living room. He's there. You just didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. And then you come back and say, oh, excuse me, Mama, I didn't see you. I'm mumbling, why are you so rude? Are mm -hmm. you going to walk in the house and say hello? There's no place that God cannot be. That's why I'm talking about, you know what? People are like, I'm a cheat on West Palm Beach. You can go to West Palm Beach. It don't matter. God's going to be in that hole. He's going to still be there. Then what you doing? Acknowledging him. If I'm not acknowledging God, what am I acknowledging? I'm asking what I want to be greater than God. Let me put it to you this way. I'm not acknowledging that there's any state troopers on that, on that road. What I'm acknowledging is that I want to get to my job a lot quicker. I'm acknowledging what I want and I'm causing what I want to supersede what 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 the authority is so i'm gonna push the authority i'm gonna push past i'm gonna push past the authority and i'm gonna hope that that authority don't catch me hmm. have you ever moved and hope don't catch you come on have you ever told a lie or did something hoping god don't catch you and god said i already see you and when you begin to acknowledge god God is not coming at you with condemnation. It's to come at you with correction that he can get you back in line. When that cop give you that ticket, hoping that you learn that not to speed, because when you speed, you put your life in danger in somebody else. That's just the truth. Are we getting this tonight? In the presence of God, I'm gonna, we, we just, this last part, we're going to be finished. She says, I'm sorry. Failure to think of me as always being with you gives you permission to walk in a way that is you do you do things and watch this you do things and say things think things you would never do you would never do say or think if I were if I were with you in flesh if you and I knew that God was with us. How many of us found ourselves doing things 
But if your mama was with you, you would never, you know, you would have never done that. When you was in school, you act, you know, especially if you had one of mamas didn't play, daddies didn't play. You know, doggone well, you wouldn't act that same way if your mama would have been in that classroom. That's why when mama come to the school, all of us looking at you like, who this little girl acting so kind? It's because who she in the presence of. So, so the, the author of this book is saying, he knows that God is always present, amen? So why are you and I doing things, talking things, thinking in a way as if we don't understand that God sees us? When you and I begin to think, that's why our question says, bring every thought into the earth. Anything that tries to exalt itself above the knowledge of God, bring it into the obedience of Christ. Sometimes you want thoughts coming in your mind that's going to try to exalt itself above the knowledge that you have learned of God. He says, capture that thought and bring it to what you know true. Amen. I know, I know, I, I know my mind saying, man, I, I, I really want to want to get with it. But the word of God says, the word of God says, be holy. So I got to capture the lie and bring it to the obedience of the truth, the word of God. And then the Bible said, be ready to revenge so disobedience will be. In other words, be ready to what you know to do is right. Do that and stop doing what is wrong. Are there any questions? Are there any questions? It says, he finishes with saying, say or think, if I were with you, flesh and blood, yet it is what, but yet it is no different as with you in the spirit as though as if I were being in the flesh. He says, I am present with you as spirit, the same way somebody would be in the flesh. What God is there is nowhere you can go that the spirit of God is not present. I'm with you. I just need you to acknowledge in the fact. That's why I can tell somebody. God saw you crying. He saw you struggling. So he appears God what? Connecting you or here he, because he saw you. He see you. And that's why I call it a divine connection. Because he will divinely connect you with something that he know you need because he's seen that you were struggling. Because he has purpose for you. So God will have somebody call you and they don't know nothing about you and they'll start talking to you. Why? Because God. In the spirit, he knows where you at, and he knows that you've been crying. He knows that you're frustrated. He knows you want something different. So he'll send somebody to intercept, to, to get, just like Satan intercepts somebody. And Satan try to send somebody to say, you know what, girl? Come on, you want let's go get here. Let me have here. Oh, let's go get drunk. Oh, I got, I got to do. I'm hook you with. Satan is going to offer you something, some type of to get you to get off that situation, to get to try to escape. How many know whatever Satan offers you will not actually solve your problem? It won't solve. But what God has to offer you, not only will it solve the problem, it will transform your life. So we don't want to take a side deal. Amen. I want something that's going to really transform my life for real. And usually, the usually the patient is offering you. You start drinking. Now you're getting DUIs. Now your kidney getting bad. Usually, whatever Satan offers you, it's going to bring more damage to your life. Does that make sense? So we're going to read more. I don't want, I'm not, um, what we don't want to do is we don't want to from the presence of God. Amen. We want to begin to get to that place to begin to acknowledge the presence of God. Amen. And then one to start running toward the presence of God. Why? <laughs> because in the presence of God is the fullness of joy. That's what peace is. That's what light is. That's what we're, that's what that's going to bring the change to your life. Amen. See, I, I you know, I, me, every time you meet, me, I support. Yes. I, I thought it was good. I ain't come out. You thought it was peace. Now I'm thinking peace is in drinking. And now you're going to the doctor because your kidneys are all messed up. And you know, you don't make real wise decisions when you're drunk or high. People don't make real smart decisions when they're drunk or high. 
Why? Because you wanted the influence of something. And then, watch this. Whatever you become, the, uh, what you took, you, you, you took something to escape from something, not a thing that you took, now got you in bond. How to do it. Now, now you're alcoholic. You took alcohol to try to escape from your problems, and the very thing that you took to escape now has you in bond and saying you can't do without it. That's bondage. Amen. You weren't born needing to drink in the morning. You weren't born needing to drink before you went to bed. So you... How many of y'all get what I'm saying? He okay. He good. Y'all, y'all get what I'm saying? So God is trying to talk people to his presence through his, but how God talks people to his presence is through you. And God. And even if you turn away from God, God is always knocking on the door and they're right to turn you back to his presence. Because the Bible says he married to the backslider, so that means he's always trying to draw, bring your attention back to his presence. Are there any? Nope. 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 His presence, y'all with me? Yeah. So we, so Green. running from the presence of God. Find yourself saying, Lord, I, I desire more of your presence. That I'm craving more for your presence. Because I want, I want that full of joy. But I know I can't get that fullness of joy outside of your presence. So I'm in the atmosphere. I'm going to put myself in the atmosphere. That presence is. Nobody does. And just as much as God is trying to desire you to go to his presence, the enemy is desires to keep you in his presence. The enemy wants to keep you in darkness. He wants you to keep you, he wants to keep you operating according to what you did. Because God. And if he can keep appealing to your feelings, you be like, I'm good. I'm good. And God be no like you lost. Amen. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you, O oh, gracious and glorious God. That... Lord, give us that strength that we need to come to this. Every trick and every lie that try to hold us up to your presence. In your presence is the fullness of joy. So we thank you tonight, O oh gracious and glorious God, for your word. We thank you, O oh gracious and glorious God, for your presence. Lord, we thank you for the increase in our life. We see that we have increased in joy. We see we have because we are in your presence, God, that we are increasing in you. So, Lord, every trick and lie of the enemy that will try to cause us to move from your presence. Or oh, they will try to be a hindrance of the journey and the craving for your presence. We did tonight in the name of Jesus. Let me give you praise in Jesus' name.